and uh, let's uh, go to Kenya. We're meeting uh, Lucy, who is a security expert, because we're, we're talking about all of this transformation happening. It's also uh, important, uh, the thought, the aspect of uh, of security. We, we, we saw uh, Dr. Eddie in his uh, introductory uh, 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 statement uh, made mention of the Sahel region, and we see elsewhere in Africa uh, the, the insecurity and uh, the consequence of this is it's affecting even the uh, development or even foreign direct uh, uh, investment across uh, the African continent. So uh, coming to you, uh, Lucy, on the aspect of uh, global transformation and where Africa stands, what in your uh, opinion, especially as a security expert, do you think stakeholders in Africa can practically uh, do to ensure uh, that uh, uh, there is a, a total change in the security of the continent that will open the continent for a favorable uh, investment that will in turn empower Africa like we are centering today on empowering Africa in the global uh, uh, or in the present uh, uh, economic transformation or global transformation. All right, uh, thank you so much, Clarice, and also for that insightful uh, introduction of the peace and security perspective of it when it comes to African transformation, because it is very important, and I always say this when I'm given a chance to speak in such a forum, and it's that peace and security is one of the most important prerequisites to any form of development, whether it's global, whether it's intra-African development. If there's no peace and security, then that, that means that there's no any other form of uh, transformation. They may be political transformation, social transformation, and economic transformation that can happen. Another one of the things that is actually ailing Africa at the moment, because, for example, I will give an example of um, DRC Congo, which is a member of the East African community. One of the things that is ailing DRC and its potential to contribute massively to the world, despite being one of the richest African countries, it's because of its instability within, you know. So once you bring a situation whereby peace and stability is uh, disrupted, then that means you have disrupted the, the rest of transformation. And some of this disruption actually is not coincidental. It is very coincidental. And that's why we are seeing questions being asked, for example, what is the uh, what is the contribution of the stakeholders that are there at the moment? We recently saw the president of DRC calling out MONUSCO, which is a UN mission that, is be, had, that has been there since 1965, but there's no stability that has been there uh, all, 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 all this time. We're also seeing the same with, for example, Somalia. What have they done? A country that has one of the biggest coastline within Africa, then that means that the potential of that particular country is wasted because there's no peace and stability. So when I link that to our topic today, which is what is the contribution or how can we harness uh, the potential of Africa to contribute to global uh, transformation, I can say we need to come back home. And before we talk about global transformation and what Africa can offer, let's talk about intra-Africa transformation. For example, if we are really talking about uh, trade and economic transformation within Africa. We have situations whereby, for example, Kenya and South Africa, and Paseka, feel free to correct me, uh, just wavered visas last year. All this time inside, uh, all, all this time, for example, Kenya, 60 years in, after independence, it took us 60 years to waiver visa for our fellow African country that we could be trading together with. So you find that Africa is very so much closed to even trade within itself. So how exactly can global transformation happen if we are really closed among ourselves? And I think we are in the right trajectory, at least on paper or policy-wise, because for example, we are talking about things like the African Free Trade Agreement. How exactly can this be used to open up Africa to itself? And then from there, we can have a common voice on what exactly we want to the rest of the world. And Patika brought out a very uh, important point in terms of how exactly are we positioning ourselves to have influence in the global geopolitics? Because what we have at the moment is that as an Af as African continent, we are just recipients of global shocks. For example, 208, 207. A global recession happens in the United States it is affecting the entire continent. 
it's we, we we did not have a say on to that but it's because of the influence that the united states a single stakeholder has on an entire continent of about 55 states we are also seeing the same with currently economic wise with the dollar the depreciation of the dollar is greatly affecting the african economies at the moment we are also seeing a lot of factors that are beyond our african control that are actually ending up not just ailing our contribution to the global transformation but even our contribution our uh, our own contribution as a continent so my solution to this will be and i think i've said it it's intra-africa transformation but how do we get there I think we're in the right trajectory because first of all, we have what we're calling regional integration. And uh, I'm very impressed sometimes to see some of the strides that regional uh, uh, regional economic communities, communities such as uh, the East African community, ECOWAS, SADAC, SEMAC, that have, that have made. Because what we are doing is that as much as we have this division of Africa, Anglophone, Francophone, and also the, the division in terms of West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, we can easily use that to merge ourselves into a global power, into now merging within, uh, within for example, the African Union. However, that cannot happen if we do not have our own independence because dependency in what is currently being called development, a fancy world of development uh, partners. But what that really means is a new form of neo-colonialism where the global powers give you some funding and then they get to dictate what your agenda is. And the ailment of another stakeholder outside the continent dictating what your priorities are is you tend to fail to represent your own people and i think that is what dr eddie uh, brought up and also viola brought up initially where we are seeing the representation of our leaders at the global scale is not reaching what here in kenya we call the common monanchi or rather the common citizen so we are seeing a lot of things happening pertaining africa but all those happenings are not bringing positive change back to the african continent or back to the most common common citizen within the african continent so that can be brought through regional integration and an example i will say we're talking about digitization there's something I've seen within the East African community where they have created a one network area such that the call rates or rather the internet rates within uh, the East African community have been harmonized and standardized such that if you're in Kenya, if you're in Uganda, if you're in, you're in Rwanda, it is just the same as how you will easily communicate or pay for your bundles and internet when you are within your own country here in Kenya. And I think if such a method is taken and is taken for uh, to add uh, an, uh, a wider perspective of African con of the African continent that will bring more transformation and that will curtail the dependency that we have uh, on the so-called development partners who are actually dictating what are the global pri uh, what are the priorities for Africa. Another thing will be. I think we need a common market and a common market can only happen through opening ourselves up. I do not understand why it is easier for me as a Kenyan or an African to travel to the United States than it is for me to actually travel to Cameroon. Yeah. So the irony of this brings about some of the things that are pulling us back as a continent, because if we are looking at the bigger picture of trading outside or getting uh, transformation outside but not within ourselves then that means the influence will always get back to us as global shock we will never have a say we will always be told this is the global agenda run with it it does not matter whether the global agenda is actually affecting you we're just told this is what is happening and that is what you have to uh to run with for example african presidents were very uh, uh were very open in talking about talking about the ukrainian um uh crisis 
but not so much about our own crisis within the within the African continent because we have a lot of conflicts going on within the continent. We have Ethiopia that is in a conflict, the Amhara conflict at the moment. We have DRC that is in a con the eastern part of DRC Congo. We have a conflict also going uh, happening. For example, the coups that are happening in Africa, but then simply because we are not setting our own agendas our priorities are just uh, rubbed just down the mat and they never get to uh, to be discussed so these are some of the things i think and i think we need to start with intra uh, intra african transformation connecting ourselves and then from there we can have uh, that power to actually set or position ourselves and influence the global agenda thank you